welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to focus on not one, not two, but three books. Look at that. Three books about cartooning. I normally focus on just one at a time in these videos, but these three are all kind of a similar a topic. So I thought I'd bundle them all into one and show you what's inside each of these. And they're all really good they're by different authors and artists. Uh, and they've all got a slightly different focus, but they're all primarily about how to draw cartoons. So let's get cracking. We'll start with this one, Trade Secrets. This is by Robin Hall, Cartoonists and Illustrators Trade Secrets. It's nice and red. There's the spine. It's published by Black. A and C Black, I should say. There's Robin Hall, look. Posing. He's a professional cartoonist and artist. And here's basically what the book covers you can see on the back. Um, let's have a look, what is it? 143 pages, It's just, all these books are pre-owned as you can see, but I think you can still pick them up used. I'm not sure if they're available new or not. I'll have to check that on uh, Amazon or other online retailers. So let's have a look what we've got inside this first book. Here's the contents look, various parts. It's broken into seven parts, um, starting with evolving as a cartoonist, the business of cartooning, lost in cyberspace. These kind of sections often get outdated pretty quickly in these kinds of books, don't they? So this was published in what, 2002, that's what, 20 years ago now. So all this stuff about computers and digital, it'll all probably be seriously out of date. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. How to make it big in the art world, the greeting card market, syndication, top tips from the pros, and what, the end is near. So let's have a quick flick through. Part one, evolving as a cartoonist. It's about developing your style, loosening up, starting somewhere. Oh yeah, this is interesting. This is about how to take constructive criticism from others, uh, not take it sort of personally, but how to build on the, the comments um, of other people. Learning from the pros. Repetition, look at this, he's saying basically that you just have to keep practicing to refine your work and practice makes perfect. And look, literally over and over again, it's just almost like muscle memory. It's training the hand to do shapes. Um, and often with cartooning, it's about speed, isn't it? It's not about careful precision. So I like these pages. They just show the amount of repetition that needs to go into your practice work and experimentation, blah, blah, blah. As you can see, that's, it's really useful, this book. There's lots of really, um, sort of lots of top tips and useful information. This is about how to just keep persevering, even if you don't at first succeed, how to get over writer's block. Um, part two, the business of cartooning. So this is sort of looking at the financial side of it all. And if you're actually trying to make your way in the world with uh, cartooning as a business, how to deal with clients. So I won't dwell on these because it's very text heavy, but it's, you know, as I say, very interesting and useful if that's the direction you're going in cartoon markets. Right, here's the cyberspace section. Computers don't let them scare you. I mean, yeah. Probably, you know, some of the principles here will be very, very much the same. Um, RAM hasn't changed, for example. Uh, printers still print. Photoshop's still around. But um, bear in mind, if you're looking at this book, it's 20 years old. And the Photoshop stuff, you know, Photoshop has really changed a lot in 20 years. Can't believe it's been around 20 years, to be honest. But it has. Um, how to make money. How to make it in the art world. Uh, yeah, this is about drawing up your plan of attack. So having some sort of strategy in place, doing some research, finding out what's already out there. Again, sketch, sketch, sketch. Don't stop sketching. Don't stop experimenting and refining, um, honing your craft. <laughs> Look at this, transfer your sketch with the projector, really? I think there's better ways of doing this using scanners and other digital tools scanning what's oh, going on to scanning now yes framing tips yeah slightly outdated right the greeting card market because a lot of people think oh i'm just going to do greeting cards they're easy but actually they're not easy because it is there's so much competition in this market it's so saturated and you know when you go to a, a card shop they're not expensive are they you're not making much money on each card sale so you've really got to um know the market i would say know your stuff if you're going to try and make it in the greeting card 
market. This is yeah, give you some ideas about the different types of uh, greeting cards. Syndication. Um, so I'm going to skip over this because I don't fully understand this. I've never had to do it. Um, yeah, I'm just skipping over it because I can't talk with any authority about this section. Soz guys, if you're interested, get the book and read it or Google syndication and artists. Um, more to tips from the pros. Various people here have been drafted in to give their two penneth. Um, so again, useful if you're pursuing, a, wanting to pursue a career or business in this field. I'm sure, they've got some really interesting tips to share. Corporate cartooning, breaking into comics. That's a whole different ball game. That's Strontium Dog. Oh, it is, yeah. You saw, I used to read 2008 AO, and there's Judge Dredd himself. I don't know what this is. Cartoons Online, yeah. yeah. That's probably happening even more than it did now again, 20 years later. What's this? Children's Book Illustration. This is something I'm really interested in. And to me, I wish I was doing. But again, it takes a lot of dedication and to, needs, you need to know your markets, but have contacts. Um, how this book was created. Hmm, okay. Oh look, this is um, done on an Apple Mac. I'm not sure which this software is, some sort of desktop publishing software. Finally, the end is near. So what's this? Just a load of kind of like references and resources, various websites, there's the bibliography. So yeah, it's a great book. If you're wanting to be a cartoonist, pick this one up if you can find it, because there's loads of trade secrets that you simply can't ignore. Okay, let's move on to the next book. This is um, Fantasy Cartooning by Ben Caldwell. And this includes 16 pages of self-perforated tracing paper. And as I said at the beginning, these are all pre-owned. So at the back, this is where you find these sheets. Now actually, there's a few, there's what, four or five maybe? I don't know, so thin, so hard to count. There's some left, but as you can see, a lot of them have been because it's perfect, it's been torn out and used. But that's fine. Okay, so let's have a look inside this. Oh, let's look at the spine first. Light and Orange, it's published by Sterling Publishing Company Incorporated. As I said, it's written by Ben Caldwell. Don't wait guys, it says on the back. The second you open this jam-packed sequel to action cartooning, you'll find everything you need to create your own fantasy cartoons. I didn't know this was a sequel. I do not have the first book. I may have to hunt it down now. So, let's have a look. What's this? Some strange beast. What about the chicken? So yeah, this is cartooning, but it's with a fantasy slant. Um, look through when was it published? It's published in 2005 by the looks of it. So again, this is nearly 20 years old. About 17. Here's the contents, cartoon magic, heroes and villains, Look, there's a bit different sections or different pages focusing on different types of um, you know, fantasy characters, if you like. The fair folk, goblins, I don't know, fairies and stuff like that. Uh, ancient beasts, horses, or you can you can read that, dragons. Let's get cracking. Cartoon magic. So, you want to draw fantasy cartoons? Me too. Once upon a time. It's an interesting font, this one, isn't it? It's like a, a sort of font you'd see in a in a comic, actually. So I'm not going to dwell on every page as usual, but you can sort of see the kind of thing we're getting here. We're in the heroes and villains section, so this is drawing a hero with oversized muscles. Um, Punch it on the face, the massive jaw. Don't know what it is about the big square jaw that heroes have to have them. Some variations here. The heroine. Different pose, different considerations for the limbs and the face. N not a big jaw for the heroine. Something about drawing peasants here. Looking a little bit, well, feeble perhaps. And some variations. So yeah, knights. Looks like the, the format here is that, you know, for every character you get some variations. Oh, you don't for that one. Oh well, warlords, scary. Amazons, bandits. Yeah, that's good. 
Magi, is that how you pronounce it? Magic people, wizards, etc. As you can see, each of their drawings has got various kind of pointers with little kind of um, observations, numbered observations, pointing to different parts of each drawing, which is kind of cool. I'm not going into the, the detail of those, but you can see they're there. Delicate glass slipper. The fair folk. So now, yeah, this is sort of the fairy section. I can't pronounce some of these. City, probably wrong. Water fairies. Cute face. A bit Disney. Sylvan fairies. That just reminds me of Sylvanian families. It's nothing to do with that. Goblins. Where would we be without goblins? The, the Dwarrow. What's a Dwarrow? Earth fair, earthy fairies. Oh, never heard of those before. Like a dwarf fairy, I suppose. That's where the inspiration for that's from. Uh, giants, giants with the big jaws. Look at that chiselled face. These are yeah, lots of different giants, ancient beasts. So this is this chapter with animal, animal type beasts uh, and dragons. So woodland critters, squirrely type things, felines. Yeah, I like this. It's good for just a flick through. Lots of different horses. Are, I think horses are hard to draw, actually. Maybe I never practiced them much as a child. I sort of drew cats and stuff instead, really. Horses' faces also are quite hard, but that's good. Gives you some kind of steps to get that face right, the right shape for the horse face. Horse in action. Of course, horses have all different types of poses. They're all difficult to draw, I think. That's a good one, a bit jumping. And then we've got like a centaur here with a man head. And finally, I think dragons. They can come in all shapes and sizes, especially these days. And they've had a resurgence under the um, How to Train Your Dragon franchise. Dragon Flight, so we've got some flying dragons. And the afterward. Of course, following this, we have these pages of index, uh, some references, and the tracing paper. What's this? Need more cartooning? Of course you do. There's a website there. I don't know. That's 17 years old. Is it still live? I don't know. You can find out if you like. So there we go. That's that book. We're moving now swiftly onto our final book. Foundation Cause Cartooning. This is by John Richardson. I like this pop art style cover. Wham it says. It's got a red spine. John Richardson and it's published. Who's this published by? Some sort of a horseshoe? Is that a? Is it a horseshoe or a helmet or a, with a feather in it? I don't know. Oh, it's Cassell Illustrated. It's a C. That's interesting, isn't it? It could have been a helmet or a horseshoe, but it's actually just a C with a feather. Right. So this is one of these paperback books that has a sort of a semi-foldy, looks like a, a dust jacket, but it's not detachable. Um, what year was this published in? Let's find out. I'll, I'll, I get the feeling this one might be a little bit more recent than the other two I've done. But I might be wrong. What does it say? 2006. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong date. So it is a little bit more recent. But again, still a few years old. I like the, uh, the fact this one's... Um, and the print quality is good on this. I like the colours. A colourful book. There's the contents. Look. We've got introduction. Tools and materials. Art of the cartoon. Creating character. Should I say characters? I don't know. Creating a character, I don't know. telling a story, master classes, and some of the bits and bobs at the end. So let's see. Here's the introduction. <laughs> Nobody does a diplo like our Og. He's got the right tools for the job. Anyway, so a bit of history look here about the history of cartoons, comics, newspaper cartoons. We've had that in other books. The cartoon today. There's a bit here about tools and materials. Oh, just take that out. I need that. Must have come when I bought it. Uh, pencils. Different tools. Pencils and pens. Brushes and inks. This is all useful stuff to, to learn about. Although, I dare say most people have got a good idea about some of these already. Here's some stuff about other tools. I mean, do people use scalpels still? It's very, they're very traditional, aren't they, those? Then we've got the inevitable computer section, which again... Peripherals is going to be a little bit out of date. It's just the way it is, isn't it? Time passes and technology changes. Wow, look at that. Oof. It's a very tall tree house. So it's talking about having here um, your little kind of studio or workspace. 
and, and this person's getting away from the world by putting it in a tree house in a very tall tree. Here's some other things that you might want to consider. Scanners. Oh, scanners, are they still used as much? I don't know if they are these days. Okay, so there's some different drawing styles here. Very minimal. Almost sort of more lifelike, sketchy. Um, so it's got some exercises. Look, try out your drawing style. It's suggesting doing it on some graph or squared paper. So yeah, I like the examples they've got. It's a bit about inspiration, figure drawing. Get one of these, these uh, wooden doll things or mannequin, and you can practice different poses, can't you? Always just find the face, you know, it's so blank. So much expression comes from the face. But anyway, it's good for body movement and posing. Um, there's another exercise here, about cartoon figures, muscles and shading, thumbnail sketches, it's like a film poster. Adding tints, yeah it's covering you know a wide range of uh, uh, techniques I guess, um, this book, and I like it, it's a good size, um, it's interesting. Working from a brief, creating character. This is the bit I wasn't sure about. So starting with the facial expressions, very important for the character. Different eyes. Adult comic characters, look at that. Hands and feet, yes, because they're difficult, aren't they? But I always like it, uh, you know, it's all very well putting these, then they're okay, they're in proportion. They look like hands, but it's actually more useful um, if you're learning to draw hands and you've not got kind of like a life model there to think about you know, the structure of it. Break it down into those shapes, the basic shapes of the hand. But they are very, so movable, aren't they? And less complicated. And the feet, they're, no, they're not a lot easier um, than hands. Fabric and clothing, yes. That's good, isn't it? All the ripples. Posture. Animals. Yeah, it's just, it really takes you on a tour of... Ah, I've seen these before. Yes, Escape from Colditch. In fact, uh, I've read the book about some chickens trying to escape from a battery farm. I like, I like them. Very expressive. I've got chickens. Love them. There's another exercise there, inanimate objects. Well, that's a good burger, isn't it? I wouldn't know how to draw a burger from, from just my mind. It's alive. Fonts, lettering design, very important for cartooning. Telling a story, okay. It's not just about the art, is it? It's about how the story unravels, the pace, and the content, the dialogue, all of these things mood and lighting effects yes. conveying movement hmm. storyboarding yes i'm a big fan of storyboarding right master classes what's this okay here's something related to uh, Lich is this an original Liechtenstein, the uh kind of pop artist back, 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 back. I like the way these uh, letterings are coming out of the frame. Children's books. So it's, yeah. Ah, greeting cards. We've been here before as well, haven't we? But these books always seem to have a section on greetings cards. Oh, this is by Dane Edner, this section. Caricatures. I'm always amazed by people who can do good caricatures. There's people in the street you can just pull out the, the, the defining features of a stranger's face within a few minutes. That's a skill, it's a skill I don't possess. Some perspective, that's good in it, I like that. I love the, the, uh, the gradient of colour. <laughs> right, we're onto the glossary, so we're nearing the end. Kiki, looking a bit cold. And here's the index. So there we go, there's the third and final book. We've had a look at that too. I don't know which was your favourite. Um, I think they're all very useful. I, mean, I think maybe the, the final cartooning one was uh, 
was my favourite, but I like them all. If you're into cartooning, why not check these out if you don't already have them? Thanks for watching the video anyway. See you next time, guys.